Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench. And Sev. <laughs> and this week we're going to talk about how... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. No, screw it. We're not gonna do it again. This week we're gonna be talking about how to make slices in cinema and After Effects and them together. 200! <laughs> Make sure to stick around to the end of this video because we have a special announcement that I'm sure somebody will ruin by putting the time code in the comments. So this is what we're going to be making today. But first, we actually have to make it. So let's go to Sev. Uh, Thanks, Joe. Let me take you through how I built these animations. So they're all based off of a Voronoi fracture. And how I'm fracturing this is I deleted all of the sources and I created a spline that had two points. So you got a straight spline there and then I subdivided the spline and then I stuck that into sources and then in sources I have it set to distribution from vertices so it's giving me a slice at every point in the effectors tab I have this full reveal plane and this is just a plane effector set to absolute and scale is set to zero 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 and then I'm controlling that with a linear field and this linear field is set to strength 100 and inner offset 100 because I want it to reveal each piece without showing it scaling from zero. So if I scrub this through, you can see what's going on here. Everywhere the plane effector linear field touches, it reveals a slice. And because there's so many slices, it feels like it's drawing on smoothly. So then to make the other layers for Joe, I took this setup and I changed a few things. So let's start with the X-ray. I should note that this model came from GrabCAD. We'll leave a link in the description below for you to get it. And because it's from GrabCAD, it has a lot of the inner workings of the of the actual model. So you have like the fans and whatever, which adds so much extra to this technique versus just a little simple like box showing up. But let me show you how this one is set up. So the source is the same, but in the effectors here, I have a different plane effector set up. And this plane effector has a box field. And the reason I'm using a box field here is because I wanted it to reveal and go away. And you can see here where the box field is, it's showing one part and getting rid of another. And I have this set up the same way. I have a strength 100 and inner offset 100. So everywhere that box is are touching, it's on. And where there's no box, it's off. If you want to know more about how I set up the X-ray shader, check out the link in the description below. And then finally, I have this glow layer set up. This one is set up much the same way. I have a plane effector here, but I have two fields instead of the one. I have a box field that's doing our reveal wherever the box is, is showing what we have. And then I have a linear field that is doing our coloring. And you can see here the linear field has a spline that I created. So it's basically giving us colors from red to bright white. And then I have it dropping straight off. And then the box field is set up exactly the same way as it was in the previous setup and it's animated with the linear field. So the one there, wherever the linear field is moving, the box field is moving. So if you scrub this through, you can see we're getting like this bright white and then it fades to the red. So then as a final step, I took all these pieces and rendered them out separately so that Joe could build his composite in After Effects. Joe, it's your turn. Go. You start now. Okay, so Sev, gave us back these three pieces that are in this elements folder here. So let's open this up. So this first one is kind of like when you're working with metal and they kind of, uh, the, the heat to like that straw color and then it goes down to like the red hot chili peppers. And uh, we, <laughs> we get through this whole thing and it goes slice by slice all the way through. And then we have this piece, which is basically the whole thing revealing. And initially this never was intended to be a reveal, but it just kind of worked out kind of cool like that. So that's what we did. And then we have this third one we're calling X-Ray because it's kind of like an X-Ray of each section piece. And my favorite part is actually this fan on the front. As you go through here, it kind of animates, which is pretty cool. Anyway, has all our lines and kind of a schematic look as we build through this thing. So let's close that up. And this is our comp that we built everything in. And the one that you've seen, there's a speed ramp. But I wanted to stick with the original timing in here so that we can have everything match up. So let's start on the bottom. We have a background. Very, very exciting. It's not black, though. It's gray. 21 all the way around. And that's that. Then we have our slice glow layer just down here. And it's just that piece that you've seen before, except for we tinted it so that everything kind of had a red tone. Then above that, let me turn the background back on. Above that, we have the x-ray layer. 
and that's been kind of tinted to a yellow. We've added levels to bring up the alpha. You can see we've crushed it down here. Then we have that fill. Then we have a grow bounds because I actually scaled this down a little bit and some of the glows were passing the edges. So we did that just to make sure that we would see everything nice and smooth without any weird crops. And then on top of that, we threw a deep glow on and we just brought the radius down a good bit. So then above that, we have the final section that's building over everything. So these kind of work in tandem together like that. I changed the timing just slightly to have a little bit of a gap in here, kind of to go back a little bit to the original idea of having just individual slices. Because the initial idea for this thing was kind of based off of, I think, Damien Hurst with uh, slices of different like animals or whatever, like an MRI or something that you would see. Plus, if this was closer, you wouldn't really be able to see what's going on here. And then on top of that, we have another piece that's called Faded. And initially, again, this was kind of like uh, more like this look where we had kind of this sectional like technical drawing kind of thing going on. They make it bigger so you can see it and move to this frame. So you can see that's kind of what was inside. So this kind of outer part kind of lived on in here, but it turned out to look a little bit better under it. So this actually is more prevalent right here because I have an extract on here to drop out all of the shadows. So this part is mainly for this like red lettering on the side of the camera. So then above that, we wanted an edge kind of for this. So that wasn't just kind of two pieces. We wanted something to bring it together. So I took a version of the same piece here. Might help to actually just solo this one in particular. So this is basically just the same thing as the final. But you can see I have it set matte on here and that's to chop off the beginning portion of it. So that we end up with basically just another slice. And actually if we turn all of this off, you can see it's just the very edge of everything in here. This mask is on here to crop out the side over here because that starts to have a glow as well with everything that's going on. And uh, I only wanted to glow on the right side here. So then we have a tint. Then we have another grow bounds to eliminate that same issue as before. I have a fast box blur. This thing is set to like three. And that's just to kind of let this bloom a little bit better. Then we have a deep glow on top of that. And then we're using echo so that it can still be leading at the beginning of the thing. Because this is offset from the final by one frame. So this thing leads that. And then the echo helps it glow over top of it for a little bit longer. So it's kind of like where the metal is cooling, basically. So you can see that's what it looks like on its own. That's just added on top. This knoll was just for sizing everything. Then we have our glow and color correction on top of everything else. So we're using Sapphire Glow because it has a nice blooming. And then we have a Lumetri and I went into Resolve and made a custom LUT for this, which will probably find its way into a product later on. And then above that, I just have a layer that has grain on it. I was using Noise HLS because I thought it was actually faster and I hadn't even animated it yet. And it seems to be about the same speed as add grain and add grain is a little bit nicer as far as the actual way the grain looks. So that's why I went with that. And you put it all together, retime it, throw some leaks over top of everything, which is also from something else that's upcoming. And then you're left with what we had before. Anyway, that's it. We hope you guys liked this one. And if you did, make sure to subscribe. And that's going to be extra important moving forward because our big announcement is that we're going to be changing up our posting schedule. We have a lot of cool and interesting ideas that we would like to work on, and they don't really fit in our weekly R&D schedule. This was a great schedule to keep us going and, and let us push forward. But as we moved forward, we kind of wanted to do things that are a little bit bigger, not so much in time or changing like the length of our tutorials. Like We really still want to keep everything short and sweet and to the point. But we don't really have the time to explore with all the work that comes in. Obviously we've been missing a couple of the last deadlines and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to work in this time crunch that we have. So we're going to switch to working out with a better schedule for us so that we can post good stuff for you guys and keep you interested and keep making interesting content as we move forward. Anyway, if you'd like to help support what we do, check out workbench.tv slash support. Keep up with the blog while you're there. And as always, I am Joe and he is... Seb. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye.